DSLR photography getting started. This is the first presentation in a series of how to better use your digital SLR camera. This video is appropriate for absolute beginners and the session is divided into two major parts. Part one covers a few important general terms and concepts which will help you understand very basic camera construction and function. Part two will focus on the top five most important digital SLR components and their basic functions. All cameras have very similar basic functions, but they vary greatly in complexity and construction. These key terms will help you understand how your digital SLR camera is both similar to and different from other types of cameras. Digital. Digital photography captures images by use of an electronic image sensor. The sensor is only able to capture the image. In order to save the image, it must be transferred to a storage device. In this example, we see that the storage device is a compact flash, or CF card. Your digital camera may use an SD card. Film records and stores the image. You'll notice that film has numbers printed on the canisters. In these examples, they are 1600, 400, and 100. You will need to become familiar with these numbers as they also are used in digital photography, but we'll cover that later. Single lens, our first hyphenated key term, simply means that the image is previewed and captured by one lens. The viewfinder image is electronically converted and is shown on the viewfinder screen much in the same way that you would view a television or computer monitor. This Canon is not considered a DSLR. It has the DSL, the digital single lens, but not the R, which we will find out about in just a moment. Dual lens. A dual lens camera uses one lens to capture the image to the digital sensor or film and uses a second lens to preview the image. Although this camera looks like it could be a film camera, it is digital. In fact, it's a very nice digital camera and has a 24 megapixel image sensor and it retails for around $7,000. The manufacturer, Leica, created some of the best loved film cameras used by professional photojournalists during the 20th century. These types of cameras with the dual lenses are called range finders. Because of modern technology, this Leica can also be used as a single lens camera. It has a feature that will translate the image coming into the main lens into a video feed and show it on the display screen. But as you can imagine, that can be a drain on battery power, so that's why Leica has created this camera with the dual lens functionality. Leica has been around a long time, since the 1920s. This Leica 107 was created in 1923 and was the first practical 35mm camera. Only 20 were manufactured, so they are very rare. This one sold at an auction for about a half million dollars. The Leica M3 on the bottom was considered one of the top 35mm cameras during the last part of the 20th century. Henri Cartier-Bresson, one of the most important photographers of the 20th century, used Leicas exclusively. Later on in the course, I will showcase some of his work and talk about how he approached photography and we'll discuss his aesthetics and working methods. Scores of internationally acclaimed photojournalists look to him as a mentor. Studying the works of masters is valuable in all the visual arts. Photography is no exception. Study the masters and you will get better. Reflex. This is the term that represents the R in DSLR. Reflex is just simply derived from the Latin term reflect and means to bend back, turn around, or change. Essentially, it just means it's a reflection, and that's how it's related to uh, the mirror. So your digital SLR camera has a 45-degree angled mirror and is very similar to this camera obscura from 1694. Chemical photography was not perfected until 1837, so artists used devices like these to help them draw, even though they couldn't capture the image instantly. But it did greatly speed up the process of creating a drawing and then uh, coming back and coloring that drawing. Mirrorless is a very simple term. It just means the camera does not have a mirror, and therefore it is not a reflex camera. This Canon and Leica that we've already looked at are both examples of mirrorless cameras. The last two terms have to deal with how lenses are constructed. The first is simple lens. That is just like the lens you would find in a pair of eyeglasses. 
It is made of one piece of glass. If we look at carefully at this cutaway image of a typical DSLR zoom lens, we will see that it has multiple lenses layered in front and back of each other. We will explain the advantages of this complex engineering when we discuss lenses in detail later. What I'd like to emphasize here though is that a camera can be a single lens camera and also have compound lenses. In fact, almost all single lens cameras and dual lens cam cameras use compound lenses. Rarely, if ever, will you find a simple lens camera anymore. So this, I, I just bring these terms in so that you won't confuse a simple lens with a single lens. At the risk of being a bit repetitive, we're going to look at these terms again, but in context to a DSLR camera. So you already know what these terms are, but we're gonna go over them. And as we go over them, they'll click a little bit better if we hadn't done the pre-teaching on the important terms. So D stands for digital and it relates to the sensor, which will be our first major component we cover when we move into part two. S and L stands for single lens and means the image is previewed and captured with just one single lens. And as we learned previously, although there are multiple glass lenses in the attached compound lens, it is still considered a single lens camera. R stands for reflex, which means there is a mirror involved. In this image, it is difficult to see how the light is bended around in the top of the camera, but it is pretty easy to see the mirror. We can see how the light bounces better in this contacts advertisement from 1949. I have added some red arrow graphics to make it easier to see how light travels both to the film and to the viewfinder. The design of your digital SLR camera has changed very little. However, don't think that price is a good deal compared to your camera, the one you see there on the screen. Depending on which lens you would choose, in $2011, this camera would cost somewhere between $3,400 to $4,400. Unlike the camera obscura from 1649, the light rays in this contacts exit the viewfinder on the rear of the camera. This is accomplished by use of a pentaprism housed in the top of the camera. And you'll see that was a distinguishing uh, characteristic of these DSLRs. They're gonna look a little bulky on top as opposed to those mirrorless cameras that we looked at. Uh, so this 35 millimeter film single lens reflex camera from 49 shows the glass pentaprism better than the previous digital camera image. And apart from the electronics and the digital sensor, this camera is very similar to your SLR. It shares the same advantages and disadvantage. The advantage is, is that you do see what you get and you don't need an extra lens to do it. And you don't have, uh, you don't have to have a battery with a, well, a battery draining video signal to see the preview image before you take the shot. Now on your digital camera, you can do that. You can set up the camera to have a video signal, but it will really uh, drain down your, your, uh, your battery. The major disadvantages, though, in these types of cameras, whether they whether a film or digital, is that the mirror and pentaprism design makes the camera bulkier, louder, and distracting, which is why those mirrorless cameras with the high in, uh, with the high-end lenses and sensors are, are starting to become uh, more seriously considered by professional photographers. Before we finish up part one, we will quickly look at two more retro cameras. This is a rather interesting dual lens camera. Here we can see how the film winds through the camera. And we see that the two lenses are about the same quality build. So it is more of a WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get camera, than the other rangefinder, range finders that we have seen. Because there's a mirror and we see it reflected up 45 degrees, that means it's a reflex camera. But there's no pentaprism, so you don't have it, that big bulky piece of glass that bends light around back you know, in the same direction that it came from. So with this type of camera, you have to hold the, down, the camera down at your waist and look down. And sometimes this was called a, a belly button camera because you took the picture from your waist. We're close to the 10 minute mark, so we're going to in this section, uh, we have just a little bit left before we start the next session and check it out. Uh, it's going to be session two, part two.